guess uh, the whole championship series. Now they don't have it anymore, so it's messed me up. So things moving out of the top five, uh, depending on my mood and attitude. Um, but that's that's where first thing, right? After you after you understand that it's all about our people. I don't think anybody walks in the door to do a bad job, right? I don't think anybody does. And that's from the janitor to the CEO, right? Just always think about that. So that what that means is you must assume positive intent. You must assume positive intent. What do I mean by that? Instead of instead of immediately assuming, oh, oh there's something bad about it, assume that they're just being honest. Make them prove that otherwise, right? Assume positive intent is amazing what you'll see. Leadership is so much more about behaviors than it is performance. We get mixed up with that sometimes. We talk about managers and leaders, right? Those are two different things. They, there's some overlap there, but managers do things right. In other words, here's the process. You step through, there's the process. Leaders do the right things. So I'll give you an example today. I know you guys are tired. I know it's late. You had a problem. We could have started at four, right? That would have been a management decision. This is the process says we're starting at four. But Kevin and the team decided, hey, we want to let everybody hear the messages that we're going to hear when we hear from these folks. So they made a leadership decision and said, no, we're going to let everybody get in. That's leadership. Management would have started at four. Half of you would have missed most of this. But maybe that would have made you happy. Anyway, so I think the leaders truly recognize the power of their people. I have a quote here from Teddy Roosevelt. The best executive is the one who has sense enough to pick the right people and self-restraint to leave them alone. Okay? Think about that. How many times would you like someone to just tell you, hey, let me go do that? And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, there's, well, you ought to do it this way and this way. No, remember that. When you're a leader, when you're in a position of leadership, and by the way, leadership is not about a position. I'm not a leader because I'm the AA for NASA, the Associate Administrator of NASA. I'm a leader because I choose to lead people. You can lead from any position you're in. In fact, some of our best leaders are not in a position, director of, boss of. They lead a team, they influence folks, they, they're just fantastic. You hear about natural born leaders sometimes. That's another one of my favorite favorite things that people talk about. Are leaders, are, are people born to be a leader? I, no, I don't think so. I think you grow it over time and I found a quote from Elaine Agatha. Leaders are born with only one thing they need, a backbone. They must grow a wishbone and a funny bone. Because right? the wishbone is vision. Leader has to provide some vision for folks. So when you're in a leadership role, think about that. People around you want to know what to do, and they will walk through fire for you if you give them that vision. If you don't, they're going to look like just all look like an ant hill that's been kicked over, right? Because they don't know where to go. And the sense of humor, trust me, if you guys don't have a sense of humor, you take yourselves too seriously, it will eat you alive. Right? Life's too short. Take the job seriously, but don't take yourself so seriously. There'll be people before there'll be people, there'll be people before you in any position you're in, and there'll be people after you. Right? So make the most of while you're there, but relax. Have some fun with it as you move forward. So there's a couple tyrannies in our world, as I call it, when you get into leadership positions, I think are really important for you to pay attention to. And, and the main one is the tyranny of or instead of the power of and. Think about that, right? How many times does something is presented to you as an or? Occasionally you could put an and in. Right? Milk or cookies? Or milk and cookies. A lot better. Think about that when you when you go forward. So those are kind of the big ones. My top five for me. And then and again they, they move in and out, but the top four are pretty pretty solid. Positive attitude. I don't care what happens to you, what somebody does to you, what what happens in your environment, the way you respond, you control. You cannot blame your attitude on anybody but you. Right? And as a leader, as a leader, you have to set that example. I went through one of the most trying times in the agency that I've ever been through when we lost Columbia. We had a, a space shuttle disaster with Columbia. I was part of the leadership team that had to bring the team back from that, from that tragedy. I didn't say everything's going to be all right, hopelessly optimistic as I call it. I said, we're going to work through this. Right? And I gave them a positive vector to take on. I could have just, I could have wallowed in the mud as I call it, you know. And just, oh, what was us, right? But we owed it to that, that, that crew, those seven astronauts, to pick our butts up off the ground and get it together and move forward, right? And that's what I mean. You have to set a positive attitude. Again, not hopelessly optimistic, just a positive attitude. I got it. We're going to move forward. That's what you do as a leader. And your team gets some confidence in it. So remember that. The attitude is what you control. 
you ever think somebody's controlling your attitude, you got to think differently. Leading change is hard. If you're ever in a position of leadership and you got to do change, that is the hardest freaking thing to do. Change is almost impossible because people have incredible equity in the status quo. And what I mean by that is they don't want to change. And it's not that they don't want to change. People don't fear change, they fear loss. What am I not going to get to do now that I was doing? And what do I do? The analogy I use with my team is monkey bars. Right? Very simple, very simple analogy. If you're going to change, that means I got to let go of this bar before I grab this bar, but I don't even know what's out there. Right? Think about the monkey bars when you were a kid, if you did that. I did it. So that's good. You must control your emotions as a leader. This does not mean don't have emotions, but you must control them. Your behavior is watched. You're in a fishbowl. You're always in a fishbowl. Whether you know it or not, those of you that got selected, you were in a fishbowl because somebody saw you. Somebody saw that you had the you had the, 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 the spark of leadership, character, and that's why you're here, right? Somebody saw that. And the further up you get in a leadership position, the more you're in that fishbowl. And people watch your behaviors. They watch how you act. I have a personal challenge with spewing. That's what my friends tell me, spewing. When I get irritated, I tend to let go. I have to work on it. Not good at it, but I work on it. The other part about being in a leader is you gotta think about when you have that behavior, right? One of my favorite quotes is, it's easy to be a clown when you're not running the circus. Right? Very easy to be a clown. So think about that when you're a leader. The next one is listen without the intent of responding. Not just listen, listen without the intent of responding. How many times have you been in a conversation and you're so wanting to respond to what they're saying that you're not even hearing them anymore? You don't hear people. Listen. Back off, stop. One of my, Doug Larson has a comment. Wisdom is the reward you get for a lifetime of listening when you would have preferred to talk. Pretty good. I have a story that, a more simple story. My wife, when we first got married, after about a year, she sat me down and she said, look, when I talk to you, I don't need you to fix things. I just need you to listen, right? Because what would happen is she'd say, hey, I need to tell you something, and I'm immediately in fix mode. Man, I'm just, I'm waiting. Tell me what it is, I'm gonna fix it, right? And what was, it was amazing what I heard, what I heard when I didn't think fix it, and I listened. And most of the time, when you're in a leadership position, when you guys are in the position that you work with your team, you're gonna find that they don't want you to fix it. They just need somebody to talk to. Them. And by the way, if you're fixing everything, who works for who? Remember that. You move forward. I think the other piece that, that comes into play a lot, and I, I would be willing to bet that a lot of people on this stage will resonate with this one. You have to have the courage to handle unjust criticism. People will criticize you because they don't understand. People will criticize you because you take a position that's different than them. Right? And that's what that's part of being part of being a leader. Because your job's not to make everybody happy. Right? But your job is to hear everybody and make them better. That's what you do. Now, Winston Churchill, you have enemies? Good. That means you stood up for something at some point. Because you're not ever gonna make everybody happy. And then Herbert Twilk, I cannot give you the formula for for success, but I can give you the formula for failure, which is try to please everybody. Right? Stand up for something. And I got one long quote I'm gonna to read to you guys just because it's my favorite quote in the world. It's on my wall at work. And, and it really gets to this one because I live in Washington, DC, and I run an agency that isn't, while Larry talks about it, while you live in Huntsville, we love NASA, everybody loves NASA, right? From that standpoint, in Washington, DC, that's not necessarily true. There's about 20 congressmen that love NASA. There's about 500 in, what does that leave? 515 that don't, right? We have to argue for that all the time. So I get criticized a lot. I get a lot of visits where I get told that we're kind of stupid. So I have to deal with that, right? And just criticism. So I'm gonna read you this long quote. I apologize for the link, but I think it's really important. Teddy Roosevelt, the man in the arena. If you ever wanna look it up, that's what, that's what it is. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how strong men stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat, and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short, comes out short again and again, because there is no effort without error or shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end of the triumph of high achievement 
and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. So that his place shall never be with those cold, timid souls who never knew victory or defeat. That's how, that's how you handle unjust criticism. You stay with the fight. I think about that. I mean, the UAB story, we got it wrong. That's just awesome. You're stuck with the fight. You got it. Right? And the cold, timid souls that sat on the sidelines and let it happen, right? That's not leadership. Leadership is the ones in the arena. So those are my top five for this year, or for this month. They change. Um, I, I'll share another couple of scar tissue things. Leaders recognize the power of diverse and inclusive workplace. Okay, so when you think about a team, you bring a team together, think about the diversity and inclusion that you wanna do. You want every member of your team working. I have places in my agency where 20% of the people are doing 80% of the work. Why is that? Why do we have to do that, right? So think about that. Watch as you work as a team, you work in these groups and you think about leadership. Pay attention to who's not participating and why. Do they feel included and why not, right? And diversity is incredibly important. And I don't just mean ethnicity and race, right? I'm talking about Diversity of thought, diversity of background. Where did you come from, right? You know, for me as an Alabama guy, it's okay to have an Auburn engineer on my team. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate those differences. Those differences are important and they'll bring you a better solution. We strive very hard to have a very diverse team to, to work to get things like Larry's mission done. You better have a sense of humor. That's a second. And it needs to be your own. Right? Nobody else has to like it. It needs to be your own. And it needs to be stories you tell about yourself, not other people. When I say a sense of humor, that's not attacking other people. That's not a sense of humor, that's attacking. But if you think if you think I'm the best engineer in the world, you're crazy, right? No, I got a bunch of great engineers around me that get the work done, right? I just happen to be the fortunate one for this period of time to be able to lead them, right? So it's important, it's incredibly important to be able to laugh at yourself. It relaxes your teams, it relaxes those around you. Again, don't take yourself so seriously. Take your job seriously. Next one is you've gotta have passion. You have to have passion. If you're doing something that you don't have passion about, find something else to do. It's, life is too short to be in a job you don't enjoy. And like I said, I just wish Kevin could get a hold of this passion <laughs> concept. <laughs> So, <coughs> communication, body language, nonverbals. You, you may have, I don't know if you guys know what all that is yet, but you'll learn, right? That, that you know, the way you react, the way you look is 80% of your communication. Somebody says something, you start rolling your eyes, you've lost it, right? They see that. I will say, um, <laughs> these are not communication devices. <laughs> they are great tools. Great tools, right? I use them all the time. I probably... God only knows how many emails I have right now. It scares me to death. To get, get, actually hit the button and find out, right? They're great tools, but they're not communication. My daughters would tell me, hey, I talked to so-and-so last night. I said, did you really talk to them? Well, I texted them, right? That's what scares me, right? The art of communication is a transmit and receive, right? These are great tools, but they're not communication. So don't forget that. It worries me. That's, that's, a, that's a piece. Look people in the eye and talk to them. Look people in the eye and talk to them. You'll go up in my book 100%. I, I have hired, I can't tell you how many people in the last five, 10 years, and, I, and this, is a, this is a challenge I see. And you guys can call me old and the old school, whatever. But part of character, part of leadership is being able to look folks in the eye and tell them what you think, right? Not send them an email or a text. By the way, it's really easy to send them. I call it the email bombs, right? For some reason, they're impersonal. The hate emails, as I call them. I think that, and then probably outside of NASA speak, it's become the bullying and the tactics that we use, right? You would never say that to people's face. So if you can't say it to their face, don't say it in text or an email. And think about that, because when you get into the workplace, right, that's totally unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. So start practicing now from that perspective. The other piece that I worry about a little bit, right, is that, that I see from a communication standpoint. We get a lot of presentations, you can imagine, big presentations from folks uh, on different topics and different ways of doing things, which are great, right? But we gotta be really careful that we don't fall in the trap that the first time some people have been criticized is when they walk into the workplace or questioned. We're, we pretty much have